this is Wayne Chapin from Zerillion, and what I want to do today is take you on a tour of the Microsoft Azure Data Center. So let's get to it. So to get a tour of a Microsoft Data Center, you can't just walk up to it. Even in Chicago here, where they have one of the one of the biggest data centers in the Microsoft Azure Data Center system, and even us as Microsoft Gold Partners, we can't just go. We have to apply, and we have to do it through our Microsoft Partner Manager, hey Jason. And then we actually have to have a customer who is, has a pretty significant project to do. And like, it has to be a project where they'll need $100,000 a year of uh, Azure services. So pretty, pretty significant. I hope soon to be actually physically uh, to be able to go to one of these data centers. Uh, but I figured today, uh, sometimes customers will want to know what the data center looks like, where it is, and things like that. And so uh, I'm going to take you on a, a virtual tour. So let's go ahead and get started with it. Microsoft provides best-in-class cloud services rooted in experience and innovation and powered by our platforms Windows Azure, Windows Server, and System Center. As we enter each room, I'll provide a brief introduction. Use the in-scene hotspots, navigation, and sensory feedback bar at the bottom of the screen to see more details. Get started. Find out how Microsoft ensures the security of your digital assets. So let's go ahead and move in. At a Microsoft nope. data there center, there are layers of what we call defense in depth security, starting hmm. at the perimeter and continuing through every area of the facility to each physical server unit. Perimeter fencing, video cameras, security personnel, secure entrances, and real time communications networks are in place to protect the physical assets and customer data housed within these facilities. We take security, privacy, and compliance seriously as we maintain and conform to the highest regulatory standards required to run our services globally. Now click the avatar and let's go inside. So I think it's really interesting. You got the fences, you got the, the big plant holder things here uh, to block cars coming in. You know, you got the security guard, bulletproof glass around him. And, and then from there, we actually have to have a, a scanner, uh, presumably of some sort of ID or badge to actually get through these doors. Pretty cool. One of the first things you notice when entering our server rooms is the sheer number of them. There are hundreds of thousands of servers in our facility in Quincy alone. From above the server racks, the networking cables travel from top of rack switches through the overhead yellow tubing, meeting at the aggregation point known as the interim distribution frame which connects the server environment to the internet. Microsoft is invested in creating one of the best connected networks on the planet, peering with over 2,000 ISPs globally to reduce latency and ensure a fast and reliable experience for our customers. Take some time to look around the server room and then move on to explore the technology that keeps them cool. Well, so here we are in a couple of racks of servers. How does your, how does your data center stack up to this? Look how clean, tight, nice, <laughs> well laid out everything is here, and you know even even then, um, you know, do you have the ability to keep replacing and refreshing all of this equipment? You know, one of the at, at, um, at Microsoft's Intelligent Cloud Boot Camp that I went to about in, in April uh, 2018. It was a week-long event, and, and, and one of the people they had there was um, the, the head honcho in charge of uh, putting in Azure data centers. And in addition to things you might expect that, you know, we need to be next to, you know, big pipes for the Internet. We need, uh, you know, a lot of electricity. We need, uh, you know, water. They also need access to um, recycling facilities, really big ones, because they're constantly recycling equipment. Uh, hard drives, processors, things like that. And so it, it occurred to me like, wow, it's one thing to just set these up, but then they have to keep replacing this stuff on a continual cycle as well. And that's just something most businesses, small businesses and, and medium businesses would have a very difficult time trying to keep up with. So if you want the latest and greatest and you never want to have to worry about the hardware, you can just leave it up to people who deal with data centers, huge ones all day long. All right, so let's see if we can get out of here. All right, we're out of the server room. Very nice looking. We'll move on down, I think, to the cooling area. One of the areas with the greatest improvement is energy efficiency. We operate our data centers at a wider temperature range between 50 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Inside our data centers, on average, it's 75 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Knowing that our servers can operate within a broader temperature range allowed us to approach power and cooling differently. There's only a select few places where we still need to run conventional cooling systems, like the chillers you see here. Later in the tour, you'll see how we use the concept of air, water, and humidity to keep our servers cool. These decisions result in extremely low energy consumption in our facilities and the right level of cooling for our servers. Our constant effort to lower costs is how we can deliver better, more affordable services. So better, more affordable services, that's an interesting point. So also at the Intelligent Cloud Bootcamp, uh, the person that was in charge of building data centers, I think Microsoft is on their fifth generation data center uh, model. That person was also there for the first generation. And he mentioned when they built out their first data center that they weren't actually in the data center business, they were actually in the air conditioning and cooling business. Because 50% of the cost of building the data center and 50% of the cost of running it was all around cooling. Uh, with the idea that you had to keep your uh, servers at uh, the server room, the environment at 50 degrees. Uh, well, with generation two, uh, they said, well, wait a second, do we have to keep things ice cold all the time? Or, you know, what can these servers operate at as far as the temperatures? And they realized they could go up to, the servers could operate from the manufacturers, they could operate up to 90 degrees. And so they thought, well, well that really opens things up. And so by doing that, they reduced the cost of maintaining the environment around these servers and thus are able to build these faster and cheaper. All right, so anyway, here's the cooling system. Um, but I think, the, as we'll see, I think later in this tour, and I was also told that the cooling that they do with their um, containers, their server modular containers, it's cooled with a garden hose, basically. One of the most memorable rooms on the data center tour is the generator room. The generators are massive. There's a distinct smell of diesel fuel, and the room is covered in reflective paneling to reduce sound. The overall effect can be a bit overwhelming, but it's evidence of the depth of our preparedness. If there's ever a disturbance in the power grid, these engines are ready to go at all times. So one of the things I'll ask you is, you know, how many generators do you have in your data center? And even if you did have a backup generator, you know, maybe you have a little battery backup or a bigger battery backup, and maybe then you actually had a generator put on the on your roof or on the side of the building if you, you went to all that trouble. You know, how much fuel do you have for that generator? Um, is it natural gas? Um, the generators at the Microsoft data centers, and they were showing pictures of it, not only do they have the generators, but they have this gigantic tank on the side of the building uh, for thousands and thousands and thousands of gallons of fuel in case they need to run it for these generators. So they are completely grid independent. It's fascinating. And even if you could even get all that, you still got to maintain these things and you've also got to eventually refresh these things. All right, we will keep going on and see what, what this guy wants to show us. All right, a little closer look at the generators. Fantastic, they're enormous. All right, continuing on. What you've seen thus far is what you'd expect to see in a more modern data center. But now it's time to show you the unexpected. In 2011, we stripped the data center down to its essence, computing, networking, storage, power, and of course, software. The result, a modular data center, which represented a dramatic shift in the way we designed, built, and deployed data centers. Previous data center designs relied heavily on deploying servers by the rack to guarantee service availability. The modular data center design combines pre-manufactured systems, including integrated power and network connections, to deliver computing capacity faster. These pre-assembled components are essentially a data center in a box. We plug them into the power and network spine, light up the servers, lock them up, and walk away. All right, so let's take a look at the modular data center um, that is now part of uh, the Gen 4 data center. And it's interesting here, we can go ahead and, and uh, deconstruct one of these and see what they look like inside. All 
All right, so here's the modular data center. And here we've got water. So there's the, the data, you know, the water hose concept uh, to cool this down. Uh, you know, so keeping the temperatures fairly high within the specs of the server operating and then just using airflow and a small amount of water uh, to cool it down. And there's the data and there's the power. So we're just using the airflow. So the integrated cooling, the simple circulation of outside air cools these modular IT packs in conjunction with adiabatic cooling methods that are employed when the outside temperature gets too high. All right, so we got our intake louvers. We've got our filters. All right. And then we have the integrated cooling. So the adiabatic cooling environment is built into the IT pack and using air and water to maintain the unit's temperature. So, okay, we got air washers. These washers continually cycle air through the IT pack. When necessary, the air passes over water to remove, to remove humidity and lower the ambient temperature. Okay, the air passes over water to remove, remove humidity. Interesting. And then the water. Water is only introduced into the it pack system when the temperature exceeds 85 degrees. This approach dramatically increases data center efficiency as the unit runs on simple airflow for most of the year. And then we have the mixing dampers. These dampers control the mix of air and water to keep the it pack within the ideal temperature range. A film membrane prevents water from directly contacting the servers. And now the servers themselves. A key benefit to a modular data center is the ability to quickly add capacity. The simplicity of the design extends from the box itself to the stripped down servers inside. The servers that run in the it packs are specially designed and engineered by Microsoft to run geo redundant services like Windows Azure. All unnecessary components like keyboard, video connections, redundant IO ports, and most importantly, dedicated fans are removed to reduce cost and complexity. That's fascinating. So not only that they stripped out everything that was not essential to running compute inside these servers, including fans. So these servers are sitting here without fans and they're being cooled by the fans and the cooling and the airflow around the unit. And that's fascinating. Fans, the air side economization isolates heat from the servers. Multiple speed fans have variable operation modes to dissipate heat based on the outside air temperature. And the exhaust fans. Dampers above the servers adjust airflow based on the outside environment. When it's cold outside, the dampers close and retain heat within the unit to maintain optimal temperature and humidity. When it's hot outside, the dampers open to vent internal heat. And then here's the frame. The frame of the it pack is built with industry standard materials, can be shipped and assembled quickly on site or installed as a prefab unit. The design is extremely simple and modular, making implementation fast and easy. And that's fascinating. And I think I've seen pictures of the Chicago data, data center where they can bring in these, these modular uh, pieces and then stack them up next to each other and add capacity real fast. So we have the control panel, the power transformer and controls are integrated right into the IDPAC unit since services like Azure and Office 365 operate in multiple locations in an active, active configuration. The IDPAC now needs only a single utility power source. Wow. Okay. So they don't need redundant utility powers. As a result, the SLA can be relaxed to three nines relative to five nines in a colo server model driving a dramatic reduction in capex and opex and there's the transformer note the single power supply in these units the need for redundant power supplies is eliminated due to services like azure and office 365 operating in multiple locations in an active active configuration Server racks. The modular rack design enables the installation of up to 2,000 servers in a single it pack. Wow, 2,000 servers going inside this thing. That's incredible. And then these are modules just being shipped wherever they need to go. 
All right, we're back outside of the modular data center. Microsoft has invested more than $15 billion in a globally distributed cloud infrastructure that is scalable, reliable, secure, and efficient. We've invested $9.5 billion in research and development to grow our capacity while continually improving operational processes. Every day, we run more than 200 global cloud services and process trillions of transactions for billions of people, and those numbers are growing exponentially. So what's next for Microsoft's data centers? We will continue to learn from our experience, invest in our network, refine our cloud server design, and innovate in our cloud services platform, Microsoft Azure, so that we can lower costs and attain our goal of having a net zero carbon footprint. All of this is so that we can better serve our customers, allowing you to not worry about escalating costs or increasing complexity and to pursue vast possibilities. So here we go. 2007, Generation 2, so Generation 1 being where there was a traditional ice-cold data center. In 2007, they said, you know, do we need, really need to build them this way, and can we do things a little more efficiently? And then here they have the, the specs around this, power utilization effectiveness. So the power going into the data center over the power actually going to the servers. So the closer that is to one, the better. Um, so uh, as it starts out a higher number, as we get more and more efficient, that gets closer and closer to one. So here we are in the t 2007 Generation 2. And then we move into the, the pod system with Generation 3. And the efficiency is getting better. The server density is increasing. Time to construct is going down. The cost is going down. You see where this is going. And now we got a more advanced looking pod with generation four and 2012, and it continues. The, the efficiency uh, is increasing uh, with the, the generation. The server density is increasing, time to construct, cost is going way down. And here we are on generation five. So, and we've even seen this um, in our Azure consulting practice where servers that we build or systems that we build in Azure are at a certain price point. And let's say it's a server, uh, a com we call them compute instances. It's a compute instance that has, let's say, four cores, 14 gigs of memory. Um, there'll be version one, and then they'll come out with a version two. And version two, we've always seen when they come out with a new version, they always seem to be about 20, 30% less in cost than the prior version. And all we have to do is we, <laughs> we take the client system you know, we take them down for five minutes, put them into the newer processors that are cheaper, and boot them back up. That's it. That's incredible. We could never do that with physical equipment. Okay, well, that was the Microsoft Azure Data Center Tour, virtually done. I hope you found this interesting, and I will post a link to it below in case you want to go to it. Thanks.